Uh-oh. There's a Katie did on the window right there, and the last time that happened, a wasp about that big came through and attacked it. Fortunately, the wasps that attack that supposedly don't attack people, but eesh, I don't I don't know if I want to risk it. Um, why am I out here? Um, you notice that my my rig for my plants is not set up right now, and there's a reason for that. Um, I'm going through, and I am cleaning up this whole mess. The, um, the plants that are alive are over here with the exception of the big potted plants, but I have got a ton of these little things that don't do anything, and the reason why these are the way that they are, um, if you remember I talked about the plants having fallen and done, you know, weird things over here, well, these are the results of those, and these, the soil is going to go in the, in the warm compost so that uh, it can be, it can be revitalized and, you know, all of that kind of jazz. So I'm collecting those. Um, I'm taking the plants that are healthy, like this little guy. This is this is the Shirazi tobacco that a friend of mine kind of inspired me to to to, to grow. Um, it's coming along nicely, as you can see. Um, let me here. If you if you take a closer look, and I think this is right. If you take a closer look, um, these leaves are nice and verdant, and this is coming along pretty well. It's probably going to have to be potted up. But look at the date, 618. Um, 618, now it's 718, right? 618, 718. We're going to be coming up on 818 here soon, so this is, this is two months' worth of growth. What do you think? I'm sorry that I'm kind of shaking this around. I'm doing this by the seat of my pants. Um, but uh, this is uh, this is the Shirazi tobacco, 618, 718, and it is the uh, it's August 9th, August 8th right now as of this filming. So yeah, is that the right amount of growth? You tell me. So that's but anyway, th I'm taking these plants. Anyway, I'm taking these plants, and they're going to go in and uh, get uh, get a little bit of uh, revitalization. So I've got the Shirazi tobacco, I've got the sage, I've got Jamaican red habanero. Those are the small ones, and then I've got, you know, I, I say small. This one is small as well, but... It's in a big pot. This this is this is a uh, and I'm pretty positive of this because of the way that it grew and how other versions of this that I've grown started out. Uh, this is a, a New Mex Heritage six four chili, and I'm just going to leave it growing in this pot. I know it's overkill and whatnot, but it's growing, and that's all I care about. If you look at the other one, and which I'm pretty sure this is a big gym, because um, I know that I've got sandias over there. Uh, this got dumped out, and this thing's doing terrific. But um, I'm gonna have to, uh, uh, you know, give some 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 worm castings and various other things. And there's a few things I want to do with this set of plants that I did not do with my last set of plants, and that is uh, just kind of give them a little bit of a boost with the uh, with the with a particular grow light that does help uh, get them get through this phase a little bit more quickly just so that they can get a little bit more stable. And the last time I did this, now I know you don't want forcing your, your buds and all and, and forcing your, your sprouts and all that type of jazz. Not a lot of people are into that and that's not really what I'm doing. Or at least that's not the reason why I'm doing it. I'm doing this because I need to make sure that before too many other things happen, I get a sturdy stalk or stem on my plants. And I've had it before where, well, you can't really see it well on this one. I've had it happen before where this stem here uh, did not develop as well as it should have, and the plant ended up having issues as, as a result. So I'm going, to, I'm going to try and get these to grow just a little bit stronger, a little bit faster before the weather changes, so that when these 
end up going inside to overwinter and grow as container plants inside, um, they're sturdy enough and hardy enough to continue that. Now I've got a bunch of other stuff going on on the inside and I'm going to show you that so um, go ahead and take a look at that and um, then, we'll, uh, then we'll come back here and I'm going to talk about my lights for a minute. Okay. So this is my room really, <laughs> but this becomes my garden uh, setup area when I go to do things like making soil and transplanting and planting new pots like that one over there. I've got some new things transplanted here. I've got this in the front here. This is this is the tomatillos and they're doing all right, but they need a little bit of oomph. And so I've got them in in uh, some newer soil and hoping that I can get some good uh, recovery from these guys because I'm really excited. I've never grown tomatillos before and they are a good container plant from what I hear. Correct me if I'm wrong, I know someone will, but uh, from what I hear, not from my own experience, but from what I hear, they're a good, uh, they're a good uh, container plant once you get them into a large enough pot, uh, probably one size up from that one and taller, deeper. They're, you know, they're, they're, they're an interesting thing. They're not quite a tomato and they're not quite a, a I don't know what. Honestly, they're just really good for for uh, for all kinds of different things, and I'm really excited to grow them. Now, I'm at my computer, which has all of my gunk around it. I mean, it, this is just a mess. Uh, this is what how what my computer table turns into when I start doing uh, planting and gardening stuff. So everything has multiple uses around here. <laughs> it's just hilarious because it's just such a mess. I mean, if you look over here, you've got um, some stuff that's uh, more pots. And actually, you know what, in, in that uh, bag that has the black pots sticking out of it, it has about five more pots that are the size of the green pot that I showed you just a moment ago. This, uh, this, this green pot down here. I have about five more of these but in a peach color. Ooh, that, that really darkened it, didn't it? Oh well. Um, so I've got about five more of these. Um, for scale, this is my foot. But the, uh, the, the, the pots are good, and this pot actually down here is going to be what I'm told, and again, I know that I'm going to get corrected on this, but what I'm told is that radishes are good container plants, and right now this has radishes in it. So we'll see what becomes of that. But uh, more of these will mean the ability to take things that I've already got in pots like this and move them up to something even bigger. And since I've got all of this soil, you know, I'm going to be able to do that. So I've got this soil. I do have a little bit of worm castings left, but probably not enough to make this much soil. Maybe about half of this. The quar in this big old block, let's see if I can get a better shot of this. Oh, there goes the, the meat fork. Um, this is quar, and this is what it looks like compressed. And you saw what it looked like earlier when it was hydrating and getting ready to be made into this wonderful, super rich soil that I've got. And we're going to go from there. So I will uh, see what happens. All right, everyone. I have to make some soil because I have a few other things for my fall garden. And I also need to pot up the plants that I have that are flourishing. So if you look here, can't really see all that much. I'm making soil, and yes, that's my foot. So I am in my video. Hello. Um, this is right now water and cocoa peat. I know you can't see it very well, so let me try and turn this. It's this rich brown stuff that you just can't see very well in this light, and I'm sorry about that. I do have a 600 watt light blaring at this, but uh, you just can't see it. Hey, Butter, what is that, huh? This is Butter. He's always curious about what I'm doing. Anyway, I'm making soil. I'm hydrating the cocoa peat. I've got some hot water over here. And yeah, that's vermiculite, and I'll have worm castings to go in there. Really, the vermiculite is just to keep things loose. It's not really a, a, a nutrient or anything like that. Most of my friends already know this and have actually told me this, so... What we're doing is we're adding in vermiculite to keep the soil draining properly. And in the meantime, 
the peat will provide the substrate and the worm castings will provide the basic starting fertilizer. So it's a really good thing. Worm castings are slow release and they are very good for this type of soil. So I'm going to make this soil a little rich and uh, let it do its thing. Right now once this stuff is hydrated I'll continue to break it apart and make it into usable soil and I will show you more of the soil a little bit later. Bye bye! Rather fascinating. Alright, so these are my grow bulbs. Um, these are my main grow bulbs. I have one other grow bulb that I use for specifically getting those stems that I talked about earlier to, to pop up a little more quickly and to, uh, to firm up a little more quickly so that the plant has some, some stuff to go on. Anyway, these bulbs, you can see that they're, they're pretty big. This, let's see, one, these, these, are, these are probably about seven or eight inches uh, long. Maybe a little shorter than that. I, I, my math is a little off this morning, so pardon me. Um, these are great, though. These, these have been responsible for keeping my plants healthy for a long time. And these are bulbs that are daylight balanced to 5,500 Kelvin. Um, they're actually 135 watts of usage as far as the power draw is concerned. So if you think maybe two and a half... Uh, maybe two 100 watt bulbs and one 60 watt bulb. I mean, you run more than that inside, right? So, so this is a uh, this is a this is one of those all concentrated in, in into one. Now, the funny thing about the, the the compact fluorescent bulbs is that you get a actual wattage draw, but you get an actual output of something very different. It's called an equivalent output, and the equivalent output of one of these, while well, these is 135 watts as a draw. Um, the actual output of these is 600 watts per bulb. Now, <laughs> I know that's a weird factor, but believe it or not, it works really, really well. And I used, uh, used these in Chicago. I used these at my old apartment, and I'm using them here. And, you know, that it's okay. They're, 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 they're really good. And, you know, I've got that rig that you saw them on with the umbrella and the dual lighting rig and whatnot. And I've got that on a timer. Now, I give these a 12-hour on and off on a running timer that runs, I think, what is it, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., something like that. And um, it works really, really well. And I'm really glad about that. But the, um, the thing about it is, is that uh, I need to get these managing more of the plants that I'm, that I'm uh, having success with this year, rather than plants that I'm kind of experimenting with. So I want to make sure that the plants that I do grow, that are growing right now, and plants that I grow for the fall harvest, are actually going to have a better uh, chance of giving me uh, produce. So I'll have my, my, my herbs, and I'll have my vegetables, and I'll have the leafy veg that, I'm start that is growing right now, or that's starting to grow right now, and things like radishes and turnips and carrots and whatnot. So uh, I want to make sure that those have the life that they need. I want to make sure that they have the, uh, the, 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 the care that they need. And right now that means that I'm rearranging this whole garden area. Um, but they're going to have this much light, and two of these together is 1,200 watts. I've got a third one that's inside that I use for my regular light. I know that sounds silly, but I love light, and it's just one of my big things. Um, I, love, I love light. I love the quality of light. I love the temperature of light, and I love what it does with the environment around it, never mind what it does for growing plants. So um, these are going to be rearranged just a little bit, and the plants are going to be rearranged, and things are going to change a bit. So... Keep an eye out for that. I'm not sure exactly when you'll see that, but you'll see it soon enough. Um, one other thing I want to show you is I'm making soil right now, and I actually I just made soil, and I'm running low on on, on fertilizer. So this last this 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 uh, batch of soil here has uh, probably going to be my last major batch. So why don't you go ahead and take a look at that, and I'll put this back together, and then we'll come back and and finish up. Okay. Hi again guys, um, this is hydrated cocoa peat, this is from a giant block that I have over here, this block has lasted me months and months and months, and I generally rehydrate it in order to make a bunch of soil, and if you can see, this soil is coming up to the side about halfway through, so I'm going to have a lot of soil. I've got uh, some worm castings I'm going to be dumping in here once this is finished. It's almost done hydrating. Let me see if I can get a better shot. I'm using a secondary light, and so I can't hold 
both hands on the camera to steady it, but I hope you're getting to see what is in here. This is nice, rich, brown cocoa peat. And for those of you who are just joining us, cocoa peat is nothing more than the fibers on the outside husk of a coconut that have been stripped and treated and all that other kind of jazz, washed and then compressed into this block kind of substance um, that uh, you break apart. You can see I've got a, my little tool here. It's kind of silly, I know, using a kitchen tool. But hey, it works. It's a carving fork and it works for me. Anyway, you, you, you take this stuff once it's dehydrated and compressed, you take it and break it apart, and you put it inside a uh, container and you rehydrate it. So it's a nice rich brown and it makes a great substrate for anything that you put in it and um, I've been using it for quite a while and I really like it. I love the worm castings I'm putting into it. They give me really good nutrition and allow my plants to grow very well and um, like I said earlier the vermiculite will go in there just to help make sure that things stay loose. Otherwise, um, there's uh, really not a lot to making the soil. And now you don't have to use worm castings, though. You can use, you know, a fertilizer of your choice. But I'm using worm castings, and uh, that's what I've got. And they'll go in here, and I'll show you what that looks like as soon as I put those in. All right, so the soil is done. You can see it's really light and fluffy. It's a great soil. It's very uh, high in nutrients, and my plants just love this. Uh, the last time I made soil that was this rich, um, I had the garden that I showed you back in that apartment where I had everything kind of smashed underneath of the light. Well, that's what was in the soil then and is now. So this soil, I'm hoping for some really good, um, some really good growing from and uh, produce. And I have a cat attacking my arm. Okay, he's gone. But uh, this is what it looks like when it's done. And I know that the Light really doesn't do it justice. It's very brown and black. The brown is the cocoa peat, the black is the fertilizer, the worm castings, and it's just really, really good. It's really nutritious and the, and the plants love it. So that is what is going on with the soil and look how much I have left. I've still got well over a half of a five gallon bucket left. So I'm doing pretty good, I think. And I'm hoping to get a few more plantings out of this for uh, things that I need to pot up as well as things that I need to plant for the fall. So that is what is going on with the soil. That's something else, right? So that soil is going into all of the current plants that are being planted for the fall and winter. That soil is going into potting up the different plants that I'm going to be using, and uh, or that I'm going to be moving um, once they're ready to be potted up, which most of them are. Um, specifically, this uh, these little well, I guess the tobacco is probably going to be one of them. Um, it's going to be potted up. Some of the ones that are over there that you can't see right now, like the tomatoes, those are going to be potted up as well, and it's going to get that soil that I just showed you. So, a lot, of, a lot of stuff going on this week. Thank you for bearing with me last week. I had no voice whatsoever, and I just could not talk to save my life. But it's really hot out here for me because, well, you know, I'm really sensitive to heat. Go figure that, a gardener who's sensitive to heat, right? Anyway, um, I'm going to go, so I hope that you enjoy this week's video and that it tells you a little bit more about what's going on, getting ready for the winter, getting ready for these plants to be overwintered on the inside, and then we'll go from there and hopefully have some good stuff to show you over the course of the winter, okay? Until then, this is Kim signing off. I will see you next time. I wonder if I could get a shot of that kitty did. Hmm. All right, so a few more things to show you here. I have, in case you can't tell, rearranged the garden area. i just back out a little bit here. There is a lot more room. So this is going to be what the new garden area looks like for a little while. Um, there are the two uh, fluorescent lamps. And there's another lamp there that I'm not going to talk about just yet. But uh, I'll tell you more about it when the time comes. Over here we've got all of these plants and they've either been... Uh, given fresh soil uh, as far as uh, fresh coating on top of their current coat 
or they've been new transplants, which means that they have soil surrounding their old root ball, or there are new plants which are going to be there for the fall slash winter veg, um, and I'm really excited about those. So I'm going to move in a little bit here, and I want to show you how much soil this took up. See how little is left here? Already back to the bottom. Bonus feature, Katie did. It's hanging out on my window. You remember that wasp that attacked the Katie did last time? I don't want to see it on this Katie did because I don't want it inside my patio, porch, whatever.